to Okay. So yesterday we left off, we were talking about sensitivity. If, oh, let's go back up. Sensitivity, defined as the amount of current flow needed to create a full-scale deflection. Full-scale deflection of what? The needle. Of the needle. So that could be any sort of needle. You know, if I had a, a voltmeter in the airplane or a voltmeter, the Simpson meter, or a pressure gauge or whatever it is, it's the sensitivity, amount of current needed to create a full-scale deflection. Then I said, the Simpson has a uh, DC voltage sensitivity of 2,000 or 20,000 ohms per volt. So if I had it on the one volt scale, which we do have, and it's 20,000 ohms, and when you do Ohm's law, it takes how many amps to make a full-scale deflection? Okay, but if I put it on the 2.5 volt scale, at 20,000 ohms, well, that would be 50K, uh, which means I will need how many amps to create a full-scale deflection? 50 All right, but if I put on the 10-volt scale at 20 ohms per volt, that's 200K. So using Ohm's law, I would need? 50 So how many microamps do I need for full-scale deflection? 50 microamps. 50 microamps. Okay, <clears throat> uh, let's see. All right. Um, I think I can skip that. Uh, let me see. Meters. Meters do have different ohm volts on each scale. Let's see. Simpson is 20,000 ohms per volt on all settings. Uh, let me see. Why do we have, why such high resistance? Does it make it a cheap meter or an expensive meter? Like, I don't know. You tell us. Well, let's just take a look at something. What if we had, I'll make this 12 volts, and we'll say that this is, I don't know, 1K? 1K ohm. And so if we did the math on this, should make it 100. Let's make it 100. Just, I don't know. I'm making up numbers, so. So 100 ohm. So what is my amperage? Which is the interactive part. Huh? Both. Point one two amps. All right, so we have point one two amps running through this because it's a, this is a series circuit, by the way. Um, and I hook a meter up to it. And let's say I hook up a voltmeter because that's in parallel here. So voltmeter, and this is my Simpson meter. And so we are going to be measuring. Uh, what scale would we put it on? We put it on the. 50 volts. Yeah, I'll make it 25. So 25 volt at 20,000 amps, amps, ohms, ohms per volt. So how many ohms would we end up having on that? 500k ohm. Okay, I hope he's right. 500k ohm. And let me think. I was kind of making this up as I went. Maybe I shouldn't have. Um, let me see. Oh, I know where we go with this. All right. So, EIR 50K. We have how many? Um, oh, I said 25 volt scale. This should work out. 25 volt. So, what is my uh, current flow through that? E. 50 microamps. <laughs> 50 microamps. You seeing a pattern there? Yep. All right. So let's think about this. We had this. We had 0.12. So if we did this circuit right here and we did it in theory, right? We didn't measure it. It was theoretical. So 12 volts, 12 volts, uh, 100, uh, 100 ohms would be um, how much current flows through there? 0 0.12. 0 0.12 amps. But now let's kind of think about we're still doing this theoretically we add in a because the voltmeter is in fact a load right that i'm adding to this so i just added a parallel load with this right here i'll write it over here um e is 20 um that doesn't work out too well because it doesn't really well okay it wouldn't actually work out because of uh, parallel circuit but this right here is going to steal 
you do it this way, it's going to steal how much? 50 micrograms. 50 micrograms. So that's going to minus 0 0.00005 amps. So how many amps do we really have running through here now? 0.11995 Barely affected the circuit at all. If we did Ohm's law, it's not going to change much. I had another, um, I threw that one up. I had another example that I, I know actually works out pretty well. What was it? Um, let me see. This is the example that I, I used last time. I thought, well, I'll make things quick and not use this one. All right, this is 100 volts. Uh, let me see, what is my, okay, I'm gonna draw some board. Um, 100 volt battery, R1 is 100K ohms. R2 is also 100 ohms. Uh, the voltage drop across each resistor should measure? 50 volts. 50. 50, 50 volts. 50 volts. Should you measure 50 volts? Um, however, if we connect a volt ohm meter with only 1,000 ohms per volt, um, so full scale deflection is 50, so if we have a volt meter that is what I want to say 1,000 ohms per volt and I put it on the 100 volt scale full scale deflection 100 volts so uh, let me see 100 volts times 1,000 equals 50,000 what? No. Oh, sorry. 100,000 ohms. All right. Um, if I do that and I place a voltmeter here, that is 100k ohms. Um, what now becomes of this resistor? You see what I'm saying right there? I'm worried I'm going to lose you. The, what's the amperage What happens? I, I just need to make this a little more simplistic for you. A parallel circuit, you gotta do it with numbers. Yeah, let me just say it this way. When you can, and maybe I should just drop this out, but this is it right here. This is our circuit, right? And so we have a total of, of how many ohms do we have here? 200 now. Okay, 200K. So that would be our theoretical. But then I put a voltmeter in here, which will represent by a load, because it is a load. I, I didn't mean it for to do that at all. Um, it is a load. And if we're measuring the voltage right here, and this voltmeter just happens to be kind of a cheaper one, where it's 1,000 ohms per volt, as where the Simpson is 20,000, 20, what does it do to the circuit? Adds resistance. Well, if that's 100K, and we just put another resistor in there. Well, we know how to do a series parallel. What does this become? This resi this new resistor right there. Fifty thousand. Fifty thousand. So instead of having how much resistance in the circuit? We just changed it to now having. So what's going to happen to the current flow? Everything's going to change, right? So we could do the math. What did our current? What was our current flow before? That would be E I R, and I want to know the I. So that's E one hundred divided by two hundred equals. Point five million. Point five million. .5 milliamps. One hundred divided by two hundred k. Yeah. Okay. Point five milliamps. But then I connect this other meter that only has a hundred. Uh, it only has 1,000 ohms per volt, and so it ends up being uh, 150 K ohms, right, is our new one. So what is my current flow now? 0.67 million. 0.67. Well, you know, it's not a whole lot, but it does change, and it also changes um, what's going to happen over here to the voltage drop across this. So everything's going to change. You know, if you've got lights, you're going to see the lights changing uh, intensity, and so that becomes a problem. So... <coughs> That would be why having a meter with a very high ohms per volt is going to be important. Yes? So when you're saying connect the 
meter, you're saying it means you're installing it, not using it as a voltmeter? No, I'm literally using it as a voltmeter. This right here could be the red lead. You say you want it to have a high ohms per volt? This is the black lead. Yes? It doesn't seem like a big jump between half a milliamp and 0.67. That's like a... Percent wise, it's 30 some 37 percent increase. Yeah, like that. yeah, that's that's kind of a big jump. Yeah, yes. So, like some of these cheaper uh multimeter digital multimeters that we have, maybe not to such quite an extreme like this, but could have like an impact as this, or with a digital one, is it kind of negated? I think a digital one negates it, it works okay. very differently. So do they even sell meters that are that? Um, like, I don't know, it seems pretty but bad, if we did huh? the same yeah. thing. Uh, just for fun, just to see. And when I say 100 volts and 100 K ohms and 100 K ohms ended up being 200 K ohms, which was point, let me see. 100 divided by 200, 1, 2, 3 equals, oh yeah, 1, 2, 3, 0. 0.5 milliamps, right? 0. 0.5 milliamps. But now we'll connect a voltmeter, a literal Simpson meter, not literal, virtual, virtual Simpson meter. And I put it across here, but I'm not going to put the little V because I don't need to. I could, I mean, maybe, I'm, you know, the voltmeter. There we go, voltmeter. And that voltmeter represents, and we're reading on the 100 scale, so that's, 100 scale, we'll say is full scale deflection, times 20,000 ohms per volt. So it's 20,000 ohms per volt. How many volts do we have? 2 million. 100. 100 so we have. 100 volts, be 2 million. Or 2 million ohms. 2 million. So this carries over here. So if I have 2 million ohms in series with 100K. One over X plus 100, one, two, three, one over X equals, one over X equals. I now have, instead of the 100K, I have 9,500, or 90, 95,000, sorry. 95238. So there, how much did that change? And so instead of having 200K, I've got one nine five two three eight ohms and one hundred volts, and that's going to change so little so right there. What's that? Two point five. Two point five. Yeah. Versus the what? Thirty three percent. Thirty seven. Yeah. Versus thirty seven. Wait. So before you used a hundred thousand as the as the example. I used a cheap one here. Yeah, hundred thousand. So that's more. It's 1,000 per volt. Yeah, 1,000 per volt. And Simpson has 200,000, 20,000 uh, 20, per volt. 20, oh, 20,000. Yeah, okay. yeah. It's got way more resistance. So like if you didn't know better, you go, oh, I want this meter. It doesn't have as much resistance. This is way better. You don't want as much current. For right, you don't want to rob the current. Plus, now, pop fuses quicker. Well, just as an aside, I know that there are some of you out there who still like to connect your ammeters like this. And an ammeter has no very, very low resistance. So let's just say it has one ohm. So now we change this instead of 100K ohms, we change this one into less than one ohm. Less than one ohm. And so the current goes through this and it gets to this point right here. And that little tiny bit may go through that, but most of it goes through the meter. And the meter says, boom. Hey, how about a new fuse? <laughs> I don't think it's fused. Maybe it is, but it's a lot. Yeah. I've never seen, nobody is, this is a challenge to you. Nobody has ever blown a fuse on the volt setting. So. How, many, how many amps can we put from the power supply? It has to have such a high ohm that whatever you're testing makes the 1 to 20,000 look small. Exactly. All right, so electronic, electronic. Uh, VOMs, what's VOM stand for? Volt ohm meter video. video. Now, do not have this issue. 
All right, this wasn't necessarily just an exercise in, oh, let's just waste some time while I'm up here. You, when you get into one of your battery projects, you are literally going to have to figure this out. Makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Just so happened that we're on this right now. You will literally create a circuit where you are doing something um, to test a battery. Let me see. Oops. Need another resistor. There are things out. So if I put a voltmeter across this, <coughs> that's going to take some power away from it, right? Yeah. Okay. And there's a thing called a shunt. Like shunt the front door or shunt up. Okay, this is a shunt. And I had to install one of these in my aircraft. And what it is used for is an ammeter in an aircraft. So if I want to install an ammeter in my aircraft, okay, what you know about ammeters, how do I have to wire that ammeter? Series. So that means that the entire aircraft load has to go to that ammeter, through it, and then out to the rest of the airplane, right? Okay, that's a silly way to do anything. So instead of doing that, if I wanted to know the current that is going through this circuit right here, I could put a shunt in here, and I represented it just as a, a resistor, which is really not the correct, I think a shunt it's is. really blocky. Yeah, it's blocky. Yeah. So a shunt, it's um, like that, I think. Can't remember if it goes up and down, but anyway, a shunt. And a shunt does not have much resistance at all. Very, very minute amount of resistance, but just enough so that there is what across here? Voltage drop. Just enough for a voltage drop. And so if I put a voltmeter across here and I knew that this was like 0. 0.00005 ohms <coughs> and I was running 50 amps through here, let me think, what would my voltage drop be? See, that would be Volt Ohm's Law. I know you've heard of the guy. It's named after Law. Um, 2.5 millivolts. 2.5 millivolts. What kind of meter do I need to read that? How's that Simpson meter going to work on that? Not very accurate. Uh, good luck with that. Um, all right. But once we're given a known, now let's just turn it around and say, well, wait a minute. What happens if I had three millivolts. Well, now how much current do I have? Well, you have your resistance still, which should still be... Ohm's law guy. Usually the shunts, isn't it the other way around? It's like 50 millivolt, 300 amp, or 20 volt, 1,000 Well, what's my answer here? Well, yeah, just, that's usually how you'll see a shunt. It won't give you the resistance. It does not give you the resistance. You do, you do three millivolts. Uh, but I just gave you the resistance. Right. Three millivolts divided by zero, 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 0.0005. Right. So how many amps do you get? 60. 60. Now I got 60 amps. See how that works? It is Ohm's law just coming at you a different way. This is why I was, uh, you know, kind of harp on you, Mike. If you don't understand Ohm's law when you're dealing with a little simple series resistance circuit or series or parallel, once we get to this, you're like, I don't know what happened. And you're looking for the person who helped you. Remember when you gave me all the answers for that? I need some more. <coughs> yeah. So this technically in, in series, would it not, if this is a dumb question, you can tell me, but would it not just be 50 amps since it is in series? It's keeping the same amperage the whole thing? Oh, no, I, I, I changed it. So. Oh, okay. No. See, I said, now, now what happens if I had a three millivolt drop. How many amps would I have? That assumes we no longer have 50. So, so the shunt? Shunt. Uh, yeah, yeah, I see that. Um, so the shunt, uh, what did I say? How did I, how did I always say this right now? For some reason, my connection is not working. Um, is it not a ratio? It's a ratio. <clears throat> it's a ratio. All right, so let me tell you about the ratio. 
the shunts that we have, most of them have written on it. Um, MV50 AMP 300. What does that mean? So if you put 3 amps through this shunt, 50 millivolts would be put out. All right, so that's a ratio, 50 to 300. Now let me tell you what, please don't be this group. Somebody, somebody wake him up and tell him, don't be this group. You need to go, then you can go back to sleep. Okay. Just don't be this guy, then you can go back to sleep. I really don't care if he sleeps. No, I will say, what does that mean? And you'll say, well, when you put how many amps through it? 300. I will get a 50 millivolt drop. So I say, okay, going to connect up the battery. And they're going to say, and I'll say, how many amps are you going to have? Well, 300. Why 300? Because it says right here I'm going to get 300. Does this control the current? No. It's a ratio. If you have 300 amps through it, you will have a? What if I have 150 amps going through it? Then I'll say 20. It's just a ratio. How much current? So what is the resistance of this? Maybe, maybe I haven't mentioned this, it'd be my fault. There's this thing called Ohm's Law. You see, and if you do Ohm's Law, where you have 50 millivolts and you have 300 amps, what is R? You see, and that would be E equals I times R, or in our case, R equals E divided by I, and my memory is it's many zeros and 47. Somebody's gonna tell me. Oh, then I was wrong. Sorry. I was going to my memory. So that you're right. I do remember now. How many zeros? Three. Three. One, six, seven? Yeah, one, six, seven. One, six, seven. Ohms? Yeah. Yep. Is everybody with me? Yes. Micro-ohms? It's just Ohm's law. If you have a resistor... If I have a battery and I have a resistor and I said let's solve this equation and I will tell you right now that the voltage drop is 50 millivolts and the current is 300 amps. How much is my resistance? Do you remember this thing? Yeah. yeah. Same thing. Okay, that's all I did. I just So you just keep looking for that over and over. So what is resistance? So you can turn it around and you can just say, well, I measured the voltage drop across this thing right here and I got, geez, what would one volt be? 6,000 6, amps? Yeah. <laughs> you could do it a ratio if you wanted to. 50 millivolts is to 300 is one is to what? Or you could just remember that it's 0.12367, it's not 1667? Yeah. And do the math on that, 167. I wasn't kidding. I mean, 6,000? Well, I mean, if 0 0.05 yeah. is, uh, if, if, if 300 divided by 0 0.05. I'll just do it like this. Um, 6,000, then that means six, then if you would have to multiply what voltage you get across it by 6,000, and that would include your amps, right? Yeah, it's like 5,000. Yeah, so he's right, 6,000. So if you do it what, 0, 0, 1, 6, 7, we're rounding when we get that number. It comes up to 5, 9, 8, 8, 8. So it's um, 6,000. 6,000 amps. And so don't be the person who hooks this up, and, I, and you hook up a Simpson meter to it and you say well I've got a 12 volt battery so I better set my Simpson meter to 20 to 25 why would you do that 12 volt battery you never know what you're gonna get are you going to get even one volt across this No. <laughs> okay. so see yes yeah, so you'll be hooking the Simpson meter up you got it on a 25 volt scale and I'm just gonna say all right go for it you close the battery switch like Huh, that didn't move at all. 
Want me to come back? Yeah, I must not have it connected right. All right, I'll see you in an hour. Because <laughs> I just told you. So that's what a shunt does. So, yes, I had to hook up in my airplane. It's Mine is much, much smaller because I don't have three. It's something, you know, it's the size of one, half of that little thing. And to stick it up in there and then run the voltmeter and pick it up in there. So, Aren't they usually way. used in correlation with the motor? Motor? Like a DC motor or whatnot? No, it's used to measure amps. Okay. It's literally an ammeter. So you hook this up. Sorry. Let's go. Uh, we got the airplane battery. Goes to the master switch, on and on and on. Um, we'll put a shunt. Um, and then we'll go to the bus bar. And then off the bus bar, we can have the, um, well, I'll put a generator. A generator. And then off this, I put a voltmeter or ammeter. Voltmeter. It's a voltmeter that reads, reads what? Amps. So if the, you can wire them in different ways, but in this particular one, it's going to be a sort of a battery indicator. So if the battery is supplying amps to the load, to the aircraft, then this is going to be out of the battery and it will be a negative. It'll swing negative. You're taking it away from the battery. Then once you start the aircraft and the generator starts working and the generator now starts putting out and it supplies all the power to the loads, guess what? It also starts charging the battery. And when it starts going this way and not that way, then this will swing positive and it will tell you how much amperage is going into the battery. And that's how ammeters use them to monitor the battery, not so much the load of the aircraft. You could, if you wanted to, wire it in so it's the aircraft load. It's just in my particular aircraft, and most of them we do it so that you measure what's going into the battery. You follow? So I get in the aircraft, I turn on the master switch, which turns on the battery. And by the way, it's a solenoid. And uh, so the, the, the relay, so the relay closes, the, now the aircraft is powered up. My instruments start coming on. You have there's electric gyros. You can hear them start to running. You got the beacon up top flashing. And so I'll see it go negative uh, 10 amps running all that stuff. And I can turn on the landing lights and see it go negative 20 or 30. And they really, yeah, I don't have LEDs. So it really starts pulling. And all right, you get in, you buckle up, you get the aircraft started. Generator comes online now. And the generator takes over, and the battery is no longer supplying the load, but the generator or, or alternator is. So now I'm going to see the battery is no longer supplying this, the uh, electricity to the aircraft, but now the battery is a load itself to the alternator generator. It's a load. It's got to charge it back up. And I'll see it swing all the way over to 10, 12, 15 amps. And what should it start doing? Slowly, slowly, slowly. It goes back towards just a little bit past zero, maybe two amps, two, three amps. What it did is the battery charged up, got down to about two amps, and now it's just taking a two amp charge throughout the flight, maybe one, one and a half, two amps. And that's all you'll see through the whole flight. Now, in my particular airplane, um, flying home at night, if I leave the taxi and landing lights on, because they're not LED and they have a gigantic draw, then what am I going to see on the ammeters I'm flying home? You're going to see a whole load. One to two amps. Why? Oh, the alternator. Because the alternator is supplying the load, and now I'm only seeing what's going to the battery. So, all right, get to the airport, pull the power all the way back. Start going. Get it ready. What do I see my ammeter do? Start. Swing negative. I mean, you know, a lot. Why? Because my particular aircraft, which I don't like, which you go to idle, the alternator isn't producing enough to put out enough power to supply all of its needs. So the battery has to compensate for that. And now I see a negative and a, and a quite a big draw going down. So. Um, would you have to, um, would it be a major alteration changing uh, from, uh, so it would be from an incandescent bulb to a uh, LED? Yes, it is a major alteration. Care to guess what an LED bulb costs for my aircraft? 
400? Yeah, the wigwag ones are 400 each. And the non-wigwags are 256. I would say people do it either way. <coughs> got some in their classroom for free. What? Got some of the LEDs in the classroom for free. No, <laughs> <laughs> Landing LEDs, yeah. One little. <laughs> <laughs> Just connect them all together. How did they work? Did you build that for me? All right, so electric uh, VOMs, like I said, don't have that particular issue. Uh, if the voltmeter had low resistance, all the current would do what when you, if the voltmeter, this is just a review, Flow right through it. Flow right through it, bypassing the load. And we don't want to change the circuit we're working on, so that's why we want all that. All right, so a lot of that was, a, that was volt meters. Ammeters uh, is pretty much the same thing. We're just going to look at them a little different. So an ammeter, well, measures current flow. I'll write that just in A as you are. Measures current flow. All right, measures current flow. Measures current flow. Um, so an ammeter, it works on the same principle. We've already learned that, that an ammeter is really kind of, well, I was going to say, is it an ammeter or a voltmeter that measures amps, or is it uh, one the other way around? So, but without confusing thing, um, an ammeter. <coughs> works on the exact same principle as a voltmeter. It's really the same thing. Uh, the big exception is what? What's the big difference? Yeah, F, F, E, R, E, and C difference. The difference is, say it again. Amount of resistance. The amount of resistance. The difference is that, well, ammeter is connected. ECT connected in what? Series. Series. And has very low resistance. <coughs> I've seen a couple of you hook an ammeter in parallel across an LED bulb. What happens to the LED bulb when you do that? It dies. Why does it die? You just bypassed it. You just gave it a route around the LED and the LED goes out. That should be your clue you're doing something wrong. <laughs> yep, you bypass the LED, goes through the ammeter and down. Yes? That doesn't cause the ammeter to blow out because it just, instead of running in parallel, it just turns? It re usually it doesn't cause the fuse to blow in the ammeter because you have so many resist resistors already in the circuit that you've pulled it down to like 30 milliamps. And that's enough that it can the fuse can handle it. So you've throttled your circuit down to the point where the ammeter can actually handle it. So can the ammeter be hooked up in series or in parallel across a circuit that has a ton of resistors in it? In, in any any yeah. battery you get? It? It's yeah, just it when you go straight the to the battery. It's when you get up. And I don't know how many amps. I'd have to look at what the fuse is. When you get up into the amp blow range, it it pops. So yeah, as long as you're measuring very very small amounts then the fuse won't blow. You're just doing it wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Is it inaccurate then? Like, it well, no, it's completely inaccurate because yeah, it's measured. It's meant to be measured in series and you did it in parallel. Yeah. Um, and in some cases it can get close because you've just robbed all of the amperage that was going through this branch and just bypassed it around. So it gets kind of close. Uh, let's see. All right, so for very Small, this is actually a good segue, amounts of current. Current. Um, the internal coils can handle the current. Um, what I mean by that is if we look back at what the sensitivity was, and we have 50 microamps. 
So if you're measuring a current in a circuit that is less than 50 microamps in that example, the meter's going to be just fine. It was designed to handle that. But let's say I want to measure an amp or 10 amps. Can we run that through the little coils inside the meter movement? Uh, definitely not. I'm going to go definitely not. <laughs> you can. You can. Of course you can. <laughs> Once. <laughs> All right. You can't do that. So um, I have this number. So we'll say four currents. Four currents over, and I'll just put this, um, say 10 milliamps, just, you know, because I, whatever book I did said that. A shunt is used. A shunt is used. The word shunt really means parallel. So shunt means parallel. Why don't they just say parallel? Well, maybe it was a hard word to spell for somebody, so they just went with shunt. So whenever you see shunt, it means parallel. So this is a shunt. It's parallel. It works in parallel. Um, when you get into motors, yes. You wouldn't call it a parallel wound motor. You'd call it a shunt wound motor. But what does that mean? It means it's wound in parallel. Why don't you call it that? I don't know, because it's decided Too it's going to call it. Too many letters, yeah. Too many syllables. Do you know how expensive those little label maker tapes are? So. All right. Oh, I actually, I just wrote that as an aside. That was my next note. Um, shunt means parallel. Um, in this case, in this case, it, with the ammeter, um, a parallel resistor is used. Think of a shunt as a bypass. So, think of a shunt as a bypass. Sometimes, not always. Right, like just sticking this in the generator line, alternator comes through this way and goes out that way. It's not bypassing anything, it just, but it does create a little bypass. So just be careful how you think of that. But in our application we're going to look at here, that would um, kind of count as a bypass. So all right, so all right, consider I'll consider means example um, an ammeter. Ammeter that requires that requires 0 0.01 amps for a full scale deflection. Full scale deflection. And and the movement. What's movement mean? The needle movement? The, so you have a digital watch, or not a digital, you have like an analog watch, you know, old timey watch. That It's called a movement. It's what the thing. So when we're talking about um, an, uh, an analog ohmmeter, voltmeter, ammeter, the needle thing, that's called the movement. So, and the movement, um, uh, it, or it not has, is five ohms. So it has a five ohm movement, which is to say that the circuit that is created to make the needle move, all those little coils and stuff, equals five ohms. And it takes how many amps to make it go all the way from zero to full? Point zero one. All right, point zero one. Uh, let's see. Therefore, it takes how many volts to, let's see, to create a full scale deflection? Well, 0 0.01 amps, we have a 5 ohm, so it takes how many? 0 0.05. 0 0.05 volts for what to happen? Full scale deflection. Full scale deflection, okay. Let me see, I think I've got Peacher. Let me see. Why'd you do that? There we go. That's what I just drew. So we have 0 0.01 for a full scale deflection. We have a 5 ohm resistance movement. And we have to have a shunt in here. So what happens is we take 
the red lead and we have the black lead over there. Let me see a black lead over there. And so just to kind of help you out, let's see, we've got, uh, can I do this here? And we got some sort of resistance here. And we want to measure this circuit. We want to measure the voltage drop across this. Well, this black lead's got to go right there, right? The red lead's got to go right there. So now we've got this ammeter connected in series. series, but we look inside of it and what well, can this little takes 0 0.01 amps to make a full scale deflection, well, we could have a lot more than 0 0.01 amps going through this. I haven't set up the numbers yet. So we've got to make sure that we have a, an appropriate resistor here. And that's what you're doing when you're switching the scale. Like if I was going to put it on the uh, um, oh, full scale deflection is like 0 0.01, well, this would be zero because this would handle it, right? Okay. Um, but if we're measuring 12 volts and one amp, is it going to handle this? No, it's going to bing, it's going to come over here and it's going to vibrate on this side and go, oh, that's not going to work. So uh, let's say we want to measure something that has 30 amps, 30 amps, all right? Um, let's see. So if I want to measure 30 amps right here, then I need to figure out what would this be right there? Are you following me? To drop it down below. So we've got to make sure that this up here gets 0 0.01. We'll say full scale deflection. We'll make life easy on you. And we want a full scale deflection, which takes 0 0.01 amps. So what is my resistance going to be right here? Which is probably exactly what is written there. If I'm not mistaken. So uh, let's see. We want to measure 30 amps with the same meter. So only 0 0.1 foot meter. Therefore, how much needs to, oh, let me see, could I draw it out in a nice way? Um, I think. So we need, through the movement, 0 0.01 amps. So how much has to flow through the shunt? 29.99 amps. You follow that? I could have wrote it actually sideways a little better. So we have 30 amps has to go through this thing. Only 0 0.01 can go through what? Right, we have 30 amps. So only 0 0.01 can go through the needle. So how much goes not in the needle? 29.99 does not go through the needle. All right, so what was my resistance of the needle? Five ohms. Five ohms. And so how much voltage dropped went through that? 0 0.05. 0 0.05. All right, so now the question is, what do I need, what do I need this to be over here? What is my voltage drop over here? Well, why is it 0 0.05 volt? Because it's a parallel circuit, 0 0.05 volt. So what resistance, that was the original question, did I need, oops, R goes over there. What, was, what resistance need, do I need to make this happen and not blow up the meter? 0 0.00167 ohms it was a simple parallel circuit question just presented in a different way let's go back and look what we had so that other resistor has to take the brunt of the load let's see point one six six seven. I told you it was the example let me set up one more for you I'll do it this way. This time, this will be the, this, oops, 
I'm already starting off bad. Uh, this would be my movement. That's movement. This is my shunt resistor. Why do you do that? That's my shunt resistor. And let me think. Um, I don't know, give me a number. How many amps? 12. 12. 12 amps. We're going to measure 12 amps. Well, this is in parallel. Just like that. And really what I'm saying, kind of it, I think it looks like this. If you want to look at something like that. And this is EIR, so this is 12 amps. And so we have EIR right there. We have EIR right there. And what is the given? What are my givens? The resistance on the movement is? 5 ohms. 5 ohms. And what else? The amperage. The amperage that it takes to move the needle. 0.01. And the voltage drop has not changed because neither had these. So the voltage drop was? 0 0.05 volts. 0.05 volts. So if we have that in parallel with this, what is my voltage drop across the shunt? 0 0.05 volts. Well, how many? Let me see. Ah, so we have 12 amps going through a parallel circuit. 0.01 went up and went through this way, this way, 0 0.01 amps went that way, so how much went this way out of 12? 11.99. What's that? 11.99. 11.99 9 amps. Therefore, the resistance is? 0 0.0042 ohms. 0 0.0042 ohms. So outside of the application, I would say this is actually like a 309 thing right here. It's a parallel circuit with two resistors. And the information was just presented a little different. Break it down into its core concepts. Once you break it down into core concepts, you can't make it much harder than this. It just keeps circling right back around to E equals IR. It's like really how many, you know, and so you just need to watch out for this because it's, it's how everything in the class kind of works from now on. You just get a stupid little shunt that you should be able to do. Oh, E equals I over R. It's, okay, got that. Oh, you got, a, you got a meter? Well, it's E, I, R. What else you got? And just keep bringing it back around. Um, sometimes you have to stop and think about it a little bit, but the more you think about it, the more you're like, oh, man, I got it. And honestly, um, on a personal note, it is really cool for me to see you not struggle, not see you struggle. Wow. When I love it when somebody, I see, you know, do you want me to come back? I do, and I see, and they sit, and they're struggling. I don't love the struggle, but to come back and to see somebody actually figure this out on their own with what they already knew is really cool to me. I mean, it is so cool to see you succeed in that way. Uh, that's it, just is. And you should feel really good about that. And to me, that proves, it should prove to you that you have the knowledge to do this. And that's why I go back and say, oh, I'll put you guys up against a lot of the other programs because, you know, you can do stuff like this. So, all right, any questions about this? It will be on the test. Can you do one more? Sure. Can you do another example, but using, like, the actual, like, diagram with the spring and everything? Yeah, yeah. Like this one here? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, okay, remember that now with, with my example, this 00167, it's not applicable because that is the question. The question is, what will this resistor be? So that doesn't work. So let's just say I, I want to measure something at 3 amps. So I'm going to measure 3 amps. Still with the 5 ohm uh, movement. Well, if you look at the... The thing, up at the top, it says 0 0.01 full scale, 5 ohm resistance. There's no need to change that.
I don't know, I guess I do EIR for that and EIR for that just because that's the way I like to do it. And I already know a whole bunch of stuff. 0 0.01 amp goes through this. That is 5 ohms. Using E, I, and R, I can calculate E because it's I times R, which was 0.5 volts. Zero, 0 .05. Zero, 0 0.05 volts. You think I'd learn? 0 0.05 volts. Then, because this is in series or parallel down here? Uh, it's an obvious parallel. You have it coming in. You have one, and it's, it's even drawn in parallel. It's really easy to see. It's just a little narrower. So that means that the voltage drop across this here is 0 0.05 volt. And how many amps need to go through this if I'm measuring 3 amps, 3 amps in? 2.99 amps. Then, using Ohm's law, where E divided by 0 0.05 divided by 2.99, I get a resistance of? 0 0.0167 ohms. 0 0.0167? Correct. Yeah. Let me see. 0 0.0167. Oh, yeah, because before we had 30, and so it should be about the same. So there we go. Um, let me see. All right, you guys good with that? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I've got a lot of other notes here, but this is all stuff you already know. Ammeter has very what resistance? High or low? Low. Low, low resistance. How low is it? <laughs> oh, about 0 0.0167, right? So it has very low resistance. Um, if you take the ammeter and you connect it directly to a battery, how many amps do you get? All, all of them. All of them for a very brief moment of time. Uh, just give me another minute here. We'll wrap this up. Uh, let's see. So we never want to place it in parallel. Always in series. Um, let's see. Ohm meter. Ohm meter. We've already done everything with ohm meter. It obviously measures resistance. We take the reading with the power off. Power off. Who is my power on measuring guy? Was that you? <laughs> yes. All right. Works on the same principle. Um, we actually looked at already at the Wheatstone Bridge with the zeroing out resistor. Um, let's see. Why do we have the little zero out thing on the... To balance on, it out. To balance it out. Why do we need to balance it out like all the time? Because battery. So why do you need to do it every time you go from one scale to the next? Does the battery die that fast? Different batteries. Different batteries are in there. Okay. Um, always use about the center two-thirds of the scale if possible. Now you can see why. Because of that north-south, it's most accurate in the middle, if it's at all possible. Um, let me see. How do you zero out an electrical ohm meter? Uh, you put the two test leads together, you read what it says, and subtract that. Some of them will zero themselves out. Some don't. You have to actually, if you know, if it says one ohm, you got to subtract that from everything. So it'll zero itself out just automatically, or you have to touch it to zero it out. Some you never zero out. You just got to subtract it. So I, I got a question um, on some of the, not that it really matters, but just just out of curiosity, um, on some of the like higher end digital meters or whatever, or even maybe lower end ones, if you put it in in parallel on on ammeter, will it have some type of like protection? Like no, no. They can't do that. I, maybe they do, not the ones that I, I work with, like my own personal one. It has a little, when you turn the dial, it has gates that slide down at the bottom and cover up certain ports. So if I've got the plug in the voltmeter and I want to go to ammeter, it, like it won't let you. You have to take out the plug, turn it to ammeter, and it slides and covers up the volt and opens up the amp, and then if you go to volts, it does the other thing. What so, is that? Craftsman. Is oh. craftsman yeah. uh, what's a megometer for? Because I think that's a Q and A question. What? Megometer. A megometer? Yeah. Take a megometer.
I don't know the exact, but it's just the answer is. Big number. So big number. So. One ohm, point one ohm. I need to get one of these um, are used to measure uh, very high values of resistance. <coughs> Bonus question. What position should the Simpson meter be in when you're reading it? Horizontal? Or vertical? Or does it not matter? So perpendicular to your eyes so that your mirror and everything can be lined up. This way? I guess. I mean, I guess your face is down like this. Then this way? That's the question. Horizontal, <laughs> vertical, oh, doesn't matter. Yeah, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Your face moves. Doesn't matter. Not upside down. Maybe. Not upside down. <laughs> According to the manual, the Simpson meter states you can have the meter vertical or horizontal, but it is more accurate in a horizontal position. That is where it is calibrated. So it's still use the little the handle for it. Is that still kind of close enough? I mean, the thing that you guys like flip over and it slams on the table, then you put it on again, it slams on the table, and you're like. Oh, and I did that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it makes sense having it like be more accurate in a horizontal position. Gravity. Yeah, if it's a full moon, it's even worse. <laughs>